episode 45 of Sailor Moon, the death of the Sailor Guardians, the tragic final battle, is probably the best episode in the entire show's run. After about 10 minutes of setup, where each scene just creates an increasing feeling that there's something very wrong, filling the viewer with a sense of dread as they wait for things to go to hell, which ironically happens right after Makoto says those exact words in the Viz dub. The other shoe drops, the smoke clears, and Makoto is dead. Things then proceed to go completely off the rails till we're left with the heartbreaking shot of Usagi sitting alone crying as she desperately tries to convince herself she's in a nightmare. I checked once out of morbid curiosity, the total runtime from when the girls arrive at D-Point to when Rei dies is just 11 minutes. In just the runtime of a lot of cartoon episodes, the world of Sailor Moon is completely turned upside down in heart-wrenching fashion. It's a sequence I feel like the show never truly tops in terms of sheer emotion and tragedy. Well, there are certainly effective and emotional deaths later on, here we see the bonds the girls have developed over the course of the season brutally taken away, and they're paced in such a way to feel incredibly sunned and brutal, yet still given the time needed to make each death feel effective and earned. It's an episode I love, yet also kinda hate watching. I think about it a ton, and it's one of the most memorable and effective episodes in the series. But I could never bring myself to watch it outside clips every once in a while because it just makes me really sad. But like I said, I think about it a ton, and during that thinking I realized something. Part of what makes this episode so effective is the fact it's basically written like one of those fucking lost episode creepypastas. Okay, hear me out on this. Lost episode creepypastas are extremely cliche. To the degree I'd argue they're basically a complete and total joke at this point, which, okay, to be fair, the entire genre of creepypasta kinda is, but these especially. The premise is usually really simple. Someone's describing an episode of a show they like that they went looking for only to find some horrifying covered up abomination that starts normal, but off till something big happens and it all goes off the rails. Throw in some mentions of hyper-realistic blood and it physically affecting people in some way, like making them sick or anxious or nervous and other edgy imagery and boom, you've got a lost episode creepypasta. Stories like Dead Bart and Squidward Suicide are probably the most famous examples, along with Candle Cove, which applies the idea to a whole fictional lost TV show, but there are countless more out there, with the idea also becoming prominent with video games, forever cursing the world with the like of Sonic.exe. Yet, despite their cliché nature and often incredibly poor and plot hole filled writing, these stories gained so much traction in the first place because they did play on a very natural source for horror, or other degree of triggering emotion in a reader, exploiting one's comfort. For a lot of people, things like Spongebob or The Simpsons, or Sailor Moon in this case, are comforting. Even when they get dark, things work out, and they become a comforting routine to watch or enjoy. That's why these types of creepypastas tend to emphasize in the early part that things feel off about the episodes. Animation being not quite right, the characters acting a bit strangely, those sorts of things. It's playing on the idea of experiencing something familiar, but being able to tell something's wrong, which creates an uneasy sense of awareness and confusion. This is what episode 45 does. The opening is a typical comedy beat of Usagi trying and failing to make dinner for her family. It's way too spicy and she ends up crying after trying it. In any other episode, this would just be a harmless comedic opening, but here, there's a slight feeling that there's something more to it. Then the group meets up and Usagi finally brings up the idea of them not making it back, and it all becomes clearer. She was trying to make a nice dinner in the previous scene because she's afraid she's never gonna see her family again. She wasn't just crying because it was spicy. The group all try to dismiss the idea and focus on what they're going to do when they get back.
They transform, get to deep point where the monsters of the day show up, speeches are made, all the usual. There's some comedy with a fake tuxedo mask illusion. Standard stuff, if a bit odd in that it's standard stuff that would normally be way later in, the, in an episode. And then Makoto falls for an illusion. Usagi and Rei go to try and free her with their attacks, complete with the typical stock footage animation, only for the monsters to pull her up. They realize they can't hit them without hitting her. Makoto decides to attack herself, while the others desperately tell her to stop before she kills herself with the amount of power she's using. And as I mentioned earlier, she doesn't just do a stock footage attack. With her telling the monsters to go to hell in a ball of lightning, it creates a massive contrast to the sorts of fight the viewer is used to in this show. Then the smoke clears and it becomes obvious Makoto's been impaled on the ice. We're deliberately obscured from seeing this, only seeing her face up close or a long distance silhouette, leaving the viewer to fill in the grisly details. This is the big turning point like in the stories I've mentioned. The Bart dying in Dead Bart, where it becomes clear to the viewer that, yes, the story's title is happening, and it's where all hell breaks loose. After Makoto dies, the episode goes full steam ahead into chaos. Ami dies buying time for the others, knowing she stands no chance. Minako dies quickly and abruptly shortly after this, with the others not even having time to react to Ami's death before it happens. And after a chilling, yet somehow still sweet scene of Rei trying to reassure Usagi after the latter begs her to go home before she loses her too, Rei dies after fighting the last two monsters. With the episode making it clear, she achieved her best case scenario. She knew she wasn't making it out of this alive, and her only hope was she could buy Usagi the ability to keep going. Then we finally get to the bit I mentioned, where Usagi's alone. There's more than just writing style choices that make this episode feel very creepypasta-like to me, for lack of a better word. For one thing, while the episode was never technically lost, it was heavily censored for the original English dub. This episode and episode 46 were actually combined into one episode because of the sheer amount of editing necessary to even hide the fact the characters die, with the dub desperately trying to cover it up by claiming they just got captured by the Negaverse. This wasn't a completely unfounded effort. After all, Sailor Moon, at least at the time, was a kid's show, and the episode had some effects on the children who watched it for the first time. There's a really interesting Tuxedo Unmasked article that I'll link down below that talks about some magazine coverage of the episode after its initial airing in Japan. Quite a few parents weren't happy with it, whether because they believed having the events of the episode get reset would send a poor message that death isn't permanent, or just believing that it was too much for a kid's show. One father reported his daughter getting sick after, and the doctor asking if she'd experienced some sort of shock or emotional trauma recently. Even during the dub's first airing, there were sites covering the differences and the real story of Sailor Moon. Fans could go and find out there actually was a whole episode where their favorite characters all brutally died with a title as unsubtle as Death of the Sailor Senshi. I'm not saying that Sailor Moon directly inspired the plague of edgy lost episode creepypastas, but it wouldn't surprise me if the type of terminally online person that would post something like the first of their kind wasn't at least somewhat familiar with the experience of finding these sorts of darker versions of episodes. The late 90s and early 2000s was the anime boom in the West after all. However, I think what makes this episode so much more effective than the stories I kind of obviously been deriding is the ending. Instead of some last desperate pull for Edge, like implying The Simpsons predicted the death of all its guest stars and also the apocalypse, or a Spongebob episode being tied to like a serial killer's rampage or something, episode 45's ending is one of the sweetest in the series to me. At her lowest, Makoto's spirit, the girl whose death started the episode spiral, reaches out to Usagi. All the girls encourage her to keep going, and firm but supportive, and complete with a smile, which I cannot 
do the emotion it conveys justice with words. It's Rei who finally gets Usagi to get back up. The episode ends on the incredibly powerful moment of Usagi running to the final fight, reminding herself she's not alone, as the viewer gets a glimpse of what's still to come. Episode 45 is the best episode of Sailor Moon to me. It's not my favorite, and for the reasons I've mentioned, I honestly don't like watching it that much, but it's incredibly effective at what it sets out to do. The writing is a lot like that of a lost episode creepypasta. The premise the sort of thing you'd expect someone to tell you about on the playground claiming they totally saw it before it got banned from TV forever or something. It takes what the viewer has come to expect and the comfort the show provides and uses it to absolutely tear apart the viewer emotionally. Yet. What makes it most effective is in spite of its darkness, it still manages one of the sweetest and most hopeful moments in the entire franchise.